Hi, my name's Alex, and I'm an engineer over at ANSYS. Today I'm going to be talking about some cool cislunar scenarios that some of our engineers have made. In this case, we're going to be taking a look at some free return trajectories and cool patterns, uh, but ultimately, how can we have a satellite that goes from the Earth to the Moon and then back with minimal propulsion? Uh, how do we achieve a cislunar orbit that's going to be something useful? Um, today I'm going to overview three really cool options uh, and then encourage you to go build some more. And if you have questions about these, feel free to always contact support. So today we're going to look at the Artemis II free return trajectory. And then we're also going to look at a mushroom cycler and a shamrock cycler. Uh, those are named as such because they look like a mushroom and a shamrock, respectively. And when you look at them at a body-body rotating frame. So on my screen in front of me, uh, I have all three of those showing at the same time, and it looks like quite a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and just show my Artemis II trajectory. Artemis II is an upcoming lunar mission. It's got a free return trajectory. Uh, that's a 2025 mission, presumably, uh, maybe 2024 if they get it out early. In this case, I'm just going to zoom in. I'm using STK Astrogator here, and on my left, I'm looking at this Earth-Moon body-body rotating frame. If I pan around and zoom out, I can go ahead and play my scenario. And I can see that because I'm in this body-body rotating frame, my trajectory is going to move very slowly uh, as the moon is moving. But if I speed up just a little bit, see that'll cycle all the way around and disappear. It's because my trajectory is over. Uh, but what's actually happening here is my satellite's flying out to the moon uh, with a certain amount of propulsion, and I'm targeting a location very close to the moon, and I'm just going to fly by. I've got enough velocity that I'm just going to fly straight by the moon. Uh, I'm not going to be captured by the moon's gravity. I'm just going to fly all the way back to the Earth. Uh, it's a completely free return. Once I launch from that LEO orbit, or maybe a MEO orbit, wherever I'm at around the Earth, I can go ahead and use that propulsion, and if I hit my target just right, if I hit that B-plane target just right around the, the moon, I can go ahead and get back to Earth for free. I don't have to boost back. Um, all I have to do is watch my satellite come back and make sure I'm tracking it properly. So that's a pretty cool mission. It's coming up soon. Uh, but you may imagine that there are maybe some cooler patterns that we can achieve, or perhaps just more sustainable uh, cycles that we might be able to achieve using this cislunar gravity. So I'm going to unshow Artemis II and then maybe show my mushroom pattern. And you can see if I look at my body-body rotating frame once again, this looks a lot like a mushroom. <laughs> it could be a tree pattern. I've heard that called as, heard be called a tree pattern as well, maybe a bush. Uh, but ultimately, uh, we've got this great swooping arc around one side of the Earth, and then a very similar looking free return trajectory uh, to Artemis, Artemis II uh, between the Earth and the Moon. Um, and I can repeat this with very, very little propulsion. Um, you, can see, <laughs> you can see in my other 3D graphics window, so maybe the Earth inertial or the Moon inertial, this looks a little bit like some spin art or something you might have done as a kid. Uh, but I assure you, this is actually a, this is a proven, mathematically proven trajectory that we could fly uh, with minimal delta V and get this really cool sustainable pattern. Uh, so cislunar space is all the rage, and this is just another example of something we can do with SDK uh, to plan these missions to make sure we have that sustainable pattern and make sure that we're tracking and maneuvering our satellite appropriately. I'm going to animate the mushroom cycler just so you can see that trajectory play as well. You can see, just like my Artemis II trajectory, that's going to spin, <laughs> of course, uh, but that's because of the frame I'm showing it in. But my satellite's going to fly out on that red trajectory, fly back on my yellow trajectory, and then, because I'm approaching the Earth with so much velocity, it's going to fly past the Earth, be sucked in just a little bit by its sphere of influence, and then I'm going to fly all the way out and way past lunar orbit. And I'm going to get a cool pass way beyond the orbit of my moon, and then back to the Earth just to repeat the whole cycle again. Now I'm going to hide that mushroom cycler and show that last pattern, that shamrock cycler. And again, this one perhaps looks the most like spin art in those right two windows, uh, but that's because it's pretty much symmetrical um, across those different planes, or at least if you were to split it into three, it's fairly symmetrical looking. Um, this is very similar to my mushroom cycler. It's a little bit more unstable, right? But again, a mathematically proven orbit that we could put some, you know, put a satellite in and plan with STK. And in this case, again, we're using Astrogator. And you can see that the yellow and orange, or the red and yellow, uh, they're almost exactly the same as either the mushroom or the Artemis II mission. Uh, we're getting that free return. We're going out to the moon, getting a free return back, and then flying past the Earth. Uh, in this case, I don't have as much velocity as that mushroom case, so I'm not making that big mushroom top. I'm not making that big cloud above my above that lunar orbit. Uh, what I'm actually doing is then just 
approaching that lunar radius, that lunar orbit radius again, and then flying back to the Earth and then doing it again, but in that third quadrant, uh, so about 120 degrees offset from where the moon is. I'm going to play that again, just like the rest of the orbits. And we can see I get that rotation again. Uh, but really great orbit, really cool thing that we can do with SDK. Uh, engineers throw this together. Doesn't take too long at all, and we can plan those cislunar missions all the way from you know the beginning of our our mission development, uh, and then and then fly these missions and actually see uh, you know how what can we do? What does our tracking look like? Um, using STK to plan and use this you know do this mission in operations. Uh, cislunar cislunar is all the rage, um, and STK is here to help you do it. If you have any interest about these scenarios, uh, feel free to contact support at agi.com. Um, we've got these available for you. We've got these for you to take a look at, uh, and we're happy to help you build your own. Give us a call, send us an email, uh, and I'll see you again soon.